Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about the fire letters, talking about Hebrew letters coming out of the keys of Enoch, key 110. The key says, the key language connecting mind time warps to interconnecting civilizations and manifestations of higher evolution in our time zone are Egyptian, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Tibetan, and Chinese. So in this class, we're going to use the text here from the book and try to understand what he's talking about in, in these fire letters. One says, we are told in this key that if we interconnect the languages of Egyptian, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Tibetan, Chinese, we will be mentally interconnected with civilizations representing the higher evolution. So now here are these ancient languages. And so what he's saying here is that these languages, Egyptian, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Tibetan, and Chinese are significant. Let's look at verse two to find out how significant. It says, Enoch carefully instructed me to use the languages of Egyptian and Chinese to unify all the biochemical languages working horizontally in the body. So these two languages, Egyptian and Chinese, are working with the body just horizontally. Whereas these other ones we'll see is vertically. It says, at the same time, I was instructed to use Sanskrit and Tibetan fire letters to unify all the biochemical languages working vertically in the human body. So those four are unique in that they are about the body, which adds insight when we think about how the languages were diversified. So you started off with Hebrew, and then back there after the Tower of Babel, you had these other languages, but these being the most important languages were only really focused on the body, while Hebrew was different. It says, finally, I was instructed to use the Hebrew fire letters, sacred energy sounds, and thought forms of light to connect with the intelligence of Kimmel and Kizil, unifying all crystalline languages of the third eye so as to open the template of the mind for the eternal light. And that's what we're talking about in this video is how important these letters are. So we have these four ancient languages that connect us to the body. And then you have this Hebrew language, this original language, which is connecting us to the celestials. And we're going to find out it's also connecting us to our father in heaven. That'll be his name. Verse three, number three says, Enoch said that if all five languages were used simultaneously, they would activate the pictographic communication of the brotherhood within the brain that would create a mental time warp and quicken the light body over self to dome with the human vessel of consciousness experience. So now, if I'm understanding this correctly, the person who is fluent in all five of these languages has these pictographic communication activated. But now how fluent do you have to be? Could we just translate what we're trying to say into these four languages and print them out and that'd be enough? Or do we have to be able to speak them? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Unless, of course, the text tells us. So let's go on. It says these languages form a grid connecting the higher I am consciousness of light with the human I am consciousness of light through a cosmic light vibration. Now, we talked about this in the other class, in a class we just did not too long ago, where we were talking about how these letters are being imprinted onto our soul and night to programs to um, impart this knowledge on us. This is how it's done through the letters, through the Hebrew letters. Four says, spiritual man is to understand that this grid is formed by languages which create horizontal Egyptian Chinese and vertical Sanskrit and Tibetan energy patterns. So it seems to be answering my question. It says, spiritual man is to understand that this grid is formed by the languages which create horizontal and vertical patterns. So 
it doesn't answer the question conclusively, but what it's saying is that we have to understand what's going on here with these letters. Talking about Egyptian, Chinese, Sanskrit, and Tibetan. Five says, these in turn are activated by the divine vector Hebrew, created by the focused light force and by the imprinting of the divine letters or energy sounds upon the vertical and horizontal grid. So we have this understanding so far. Um, I have in my notes, my mental notes, that we have this understanding about this grid. And we're also told that it is the Hebrew letters that are activating these other letters as they're being imprinted upon them. Six, the horizontal pattern connects with the mental energies that are part of the interchange of knowledge with the intermediate life situation on the plane of human experience. Part of an interchange of knowledge with the immediate life situation on the plane of human experience, the interchange goes on with you through a series of light pictographs which allow for multi levels of external knowledge to be internalized and rapidly encoded beyond that which is usually spoken. This internalization is granted through the mental process encoded upon this plane of experience. Yet, this knowledge cannot be fully understood without the vertical patterns, which form the connecting links with the lower dimensions of sensory awareness through this plane of experience into higher dimensions that are of an infinite quality of joy. So, the vertical patterns form the connecting links with the lower dimensions into the higher dimensions. All right, so here are the Tibetan letters. And there seems to be about 30 letters in the Tibetan language. But what's interesting is from here, I can already see most of the Hebrew letters in this language with a few ones, a few letters that would actually sound really, really strange to us, which is probably why we don't understand the language. But you have Ka, Cha, Ga. And then a few extra letters in here like this one. I don't even know how to pronounce as well as Nanya, Naya, Naga. But notice you have a Sha, a Ta, a Ra, a Ha, Sa, Za, Wa, Na, Da, Tha, Fa, which are all 22 letters represented from the Hebrew language in the Tibetan. But now Chinese doesn't have letters like that. But you see that the Egyptian alphabet not only has letters, but it has many of the same symbols used for the letters as the Hebrew. 12 says this divine light pattern allows for spiritual planes to be fully connected with the body and the body to assimilate the messianic experience of the Pentecostal flame. So. What if you don't have these letters? Is this possible? Well, like we talked about in the other class, these letters are being imprinted on a spirit. So I guess it's a question of whether our spirit is recognizing them or not. 13 says, in consequence, all experiences of life are fully activated and made possible to the human form, which goes into physical union with the divine self. So we have to have all five of these languages as humanity whether we understand them or not. 14 says, hence the cosmic vibrations connect the higher I am consciousness with the human I am consciousness through the five body vehicles of light, the electromagnetic body, the epikinetic body, the echo body of many relativities, the inner body of Gematria and the outer body of Zohar. These are synthesized so completely that all five bodies are drawn up through the crown chakra becoming one with the eternal light. Now, I understand from the Hebrew letters that having these words or the letters visible, like in a room or on a wall, changes the environment. And I'm wondering if these Chinese, Egyptian and Tibetan letters uh, would do the same thing. 
but let's go on. When this happens, the consciousness of every chemical cell is brought up through the body, through the seven chakras, and goes into a hovering light pyramid over the mind in the area of the eighth chakra. When this is completed, the ninth and tenth chakra grids in conjunction with the eighth chakra template can bring through all the information from the previous civilizations. The eighth chakra acts as a sign of those who work with the brotherhood of light. So now this, from what I understand, we're, we are familiar with the seven chakras, you know, or chakras. Um, I know I'm not pronouncing that right. We've always heard about these seven, but as it turns out, there are 10 of them. It's just that the eighth one will happen when we'll go to this higher consciousness entering this eighth chakra. But what we understand is that the other seven have to already be in place for the eighth to be activated. 16. This is the completion of the grid which allows the mind to speak on all seven levels and allows the species to go beyond its present soul program. Thus, Hebrew in our planetary program is the final balance necessary to connect the soul patterns of the first Adam Cadman with the patterns of redemptive creation. So if we think about it, could they have created a brand new language back there? at the Tower of Babel, created all of these languages, or did they somehow all exist and they all understood them? And then there was a division where the Chinese took the Chinese language, the Egyptian took the Egyptian language and left the Hebrews with the Hebrew language. And that's what confused humanity. Because from what I understood, from what I understand here, if all of these languages were unified, we could have similar imaginations. I mean, our minds would work like they did back there during the Tower of Babel when these people had literally conquered Earth and was ready to take on the universe and higher. Turns out it was the understanding of these languages in connection with our father and our spirit that made all of that possible. 17 says, and it was explained to me that the planetary universes must live through the programs of the star scriptures from the original codes of Egyptian, Chinese, Sanskrit, Tibetan, and Hebrew that were given to teach us the lessons of universal planetary creation and destruction within the light of life. So, yeah, you had all five of these languages in existence before the Tower of Babel, and then they were separated. They were divided. That's the way I understand it. Because if this had not taken place, humanity would still have this higher consciousness, this higher awareness. But we've obviously lost it, just like we've obviously lost the Hebrew language. Verse 18. When I was taken into Merkaba, I, Jacob, was shown how the fallen legions of Samjaza were disbanded and dispatched to three-dimensional worlds like Earth. Still, out of the fallen mixtures of the creative experience, everything advances to newborn generations, and the lessons of some star universes are replayed identically in smaller planetary universes. These smaller planetary universes without completely destroying themselves, must learn the lessons of the greater star universes. So, like we talked about in another video, when we were talking about the multi-universes and how they are generated from one universe to a next, well, if I'm understanding this correctly, it's saying that the next universe would be a smaller universe than the one previous. And the reason why I bring this up is because of something that's mentioned over in the Shepherd of Hermes when she's talking about those who are on the alternative path. And it tells you, don't be concerned too much with these people um, who are on this alternative path. The Keys of Enoch will call them the children of the dark because it says that they will go to a different mansion. It says that they have a different place prepared for them. But she also goes on to say that that place is inferior to this place. 
And so that's what it's saying here. We have the opportunity here to learn the lessons here on earth, just like we did on a previous world. Some of us would have. But having not learned that lesson on that previous, probably more better world, we were put down on this planet. And again, if we don't learn it here, the next universe will be worse than this one. I guess the idea is to show you how bad bad can get before you decide to get good. So they're saying here, those fallen angels, some Jaza and all of those people that we hear about in the first book of Enoch. They existed on the other universe. These are beings who were living as Choi Koi, regular people on the previous universe, but did not go through the final destruction to where they was able to go on to the higher mansions. And so they ended up on this lower mansion. What's bad about that is they actually made the choice. They were on a higher mansion and decided to come here, giving up all of their higher dimensional properties. Well, let's go on. And as we go through our Omega point, we once again understand what was encoded in the alpha phase of the original star programs, given our birth of destiny. And when we use the divine names from all these five languages together, like Amen Ptah, Egyptian, Pawa, Tibetan, Kawanyin, Chinese, Gabriel in Hebrew, and Buddha in Sanskrit as monstrous seed symbols, you set up a consciousness wavelength of light that resonates with all five bodies within you. Language here is a language of energy, vibrations formed by carefully selected seed mantras. So maybe this verse is going to answer my question. Now, this word omega here is a made up letter. And when we go back and look at the evolution of the alphabet, we see that there are 26 letters. But then when we get back to the Greek, we see that there are some additional letters. But you see, even here, Omega is not listed. It's because Omega is just another form of Omicron. Omicron and Omega is the same letter, like a short O sound and a long O sound. You see the letter never even made it to the Latin, the Roman or the English. So when you say Alpha and Omega, hmm, Omega doesn't even really exist. Imagine that. So when we go through the Tao or the covenant point, see, that's what this does. When you change a Tao to an Omega or a Tav to an Omega, you don't understand it. He's saying when you go through the covenant point, when we get the new covenant, we once again understand what was encoded in the alpha phase of the original star program. This is what the third testament, the great book of life is talking about when it starts saying that we start to remember things from our past and we start to understand who we really are spiritual wise. But notice this part right here. And when you use the divine names from all five languages together. So you have these divine names. This one he chose as an example is Gabriel, who is one of the archangels. This reminds me of. The Testament of Solomon and how the names of the angels are used to frustrate spirits or malicious entities that would otherwise harm us. We're told in the Testament of Solomon that we can sometimes write these names out to dispel these spirits. So now I'm wondering if we need to go back and rewrite those names, those angels' names in all five languages. Let, let's let's see what Gabriel looks like. So there it is in modern Hebrew Hebrew. God ba ra ya Allah. I got it right. God ba ra ya Allah. Let's see it in Tibetan. Now I can't argue with him, but I can check him by going to say chat GPT and punching in what it gave me and see what comes out. It says pronounce God ba real. Is the term in Tibetan and it does not have a direct commonly known translation in English. So 
So Gabriel in Tibetan is often translated as this word pronounced Kabrimpa. So let's go here. According to Google, that's Danzaga language. It's translated back to English and he gets majesty. That's why you can't trust computers. So let's go back to the language yourself and put it together. So Tibetan is written left to right like English. So there's his name in Tibetan. Gaba Ra Ya Allah. All right. So looks like I got it right. So there you have it. The seven archangels from the book of Enoch written in Hebrew, Egyptian, Chinese, Sanskrit, and Tibetan. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment below and we might include it in part two. Shalom.